Hi, I'm Cash. I'm the product manager here at Laxco Microscopes. Today I'm really excited to talk to you about our new fluorescent inverted microscope, the SLI3 Pro. Today we will redefine fluorescence microscopy. Before we start the presentation, I have a couple of questions. Are you someone who is investing a lot of time in processing multi-channel fluorescent images of your sample? Do you take static images in independent channels, assign pseudo color to them, and then finally stack them to produce the final image? Well, this is a presentation for you. Uh, before you take a look at some of these amazing fluorescent images, uh, let me show you our microscope. If you look here, uh, we have our SLI3 Pro inverted fluorescent microscope. Uh, this is a fully multi-channel system. Uh, like any other inverted microscope, this comes with all the standard features. You have your focus knob right here. You have the illumination source for your phase and bright field applications up here. Uh, I have also attached a phase slider here for your phase contrast applications. Uh, there is also a mechanical stage added here for easier sample movement. A cool feature of this system is that we have added a dark room shield here so this acts as a barrier to any external fluorescent light that might fall on your sample and interfere with your signals so that does a great job of blocking that and uh, this is also a Trinox system so as you can see you can attach a camera here let's look at the front touchpad panel here now uh, this basically has all the controls that you need to control all the illuminations on your system. You can control your fluorescent channels, you can control your bright field, you can also uh, change the intensity using this particular area. The fluorescent system on this microscope is revolutionary. This is a game-changing system. If you take a closer look, this is the fluorescent module. This is the secret sauce that is running this system. To upgrade a basic base package of our fluorescent inverted system, you can buy the system which doesn't have fluorescence on it, but you can easily upgrade it by just opening the back and pushing this fluorescent cube inside. This is our patent pending fluorescent module. As you can see, there are no moving parts on it. You don't need to move any levers to change channels and take independent images, it's all available at the click of a button. So this module goes in, this has all the three LEDs as you can see here, and this one cube uh, basically is used in the excitation and emission mode. This is our patent pending fluorescent module. If we also take a closer look at the system, you'll find that I've attached a 1.7 megapixel color camera on this uh, because we will see live color images. I repeat, we will see live color images. Uh, as I said before, uh, let's look at some of these amazing images that I have taken of our sample here. Uh, let me quickly switch over the screen. And there you go. Just at the click of a button, I have a beautiful, breathtaking, multi-channel image in front of you. This is a BPEA stained slide. Uh, which is under multi-channel. This has DAPI, GFP and RFP stain on it and this is a live image. So I just clicked a button and boom the image just appeared on our screen. So that's how easy it is. There was no static image that I had to take in independent channels. There was no layering that I had to do. There was no pseudo coloring, no post processing. None of that happened. This is just a live image. This is exactly what I see in my eyepieces, is what I am seeing on my screen. So this speaks volumes about how easy and user friendly this software is. Uh, you can use it to easily scan your entire slide and uh, look at uh, areas of interest. Uh, this is made possible by the patent pending Sibolite uh, light cube that we just saw and also our patent pending Sibolite uh, software. Now uh, I'll quickly go over the console that you see on your right. This is exactly the one that you saw on the microscope. So when you have the software, uh, you can also 
control the microscope using your software and you don't have to physically press any buttons. Uh, this is your multi-channel uh, mode button. You have the independent channels here, DAPI, GFP and RFP. This is your intensity control. You can uh, choose to increase or decrease any channel. And microscope has physical buttons of course, but uh, you can control uh, it from here. Uh, you have the flexibility of uh, turning on, turning off independent channels and also combining channels. So here, as you can see that uh, I turned off DAPI and the DAPI is completely gone. I combined the green and the red channel and now I turned off the red channel. I'm combining uh, DAPI and the green channel. I can also look at single channel so see how beautiful this uh, DAPI channel is. And if you notice there is no crosstalk, there is no bleed through, there is just blue that you see. I when I add my red channel, that's just red. I turned off DAPI and you see there is no crosstalk by DAPI. This is one of the special features of uh, this software. It completely removes crosstalk. You might see a little crosstalk through eyepieces, but it is completely digitally removed uh, on the software side. This is made possible by the patented Seabullet software. Again, when you run single channel, uh, uh, as I told you before, you can choose to bump up or push down the intensity. This again depends upon your sample. Uh, if the dye absorption is not uh, too good on your DAPI channel, you can uh, bump up the signal. I've optimized this for my sample and you can choose to do so for your sample as well. Uh, you can choose to increase or decrease uh, the, with the kind of dye that you're using and the kind of absorption you have on your sample. This is your snapshot button. You click here and there you go. I just took a snapshot of what I have on my screen. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, the you know a live screening mode that I just mentioned. Uh, this is your video recording button. You can use this to do time-lapse imaging uh, for longer experiments. You can click on this and it starts recording a video. You click it again and it stops recording the clip. This is your gallery button. It all gets stored here. You can define the location and uh, as you can see I have taken uh, a lot of images and recorded of videos and they're all stored here in the gallery and uh, again that's where the location is I'll come back to my main console this wrench is uh, where you decide what sort of image type you want to save your image as so you can choose to uh, you know choose to store it as a JPEG for low-res images and TIFF for high-res high images if you need them for publication. If it's for personal documentation, JPEG works perfectly good. This is your time-lapse box. You can define the time limit and the time intervals for your experiments that you need the images uh, taken on or the videos recorded on and then you have the frame rate selector. Uh, this is where you decide where on your system would the images and the videos be stored at and that's it that's how easy this uh, console is now let's look at this other f uh, button uh, which is the advanced setting button this comes in handy when you have different samples at the bottom of this page you can see there are three locks so basically this locks in these settings that I have done so this is now set optimally for my sample and I have locked in at the number one position and uh, I can choose uh, you know my settings accordingly I can increase or decrease uh, the color the gain I have preset it at one and uh, here which is here and I can choose to save it by hitting the save button you can so on and so forth you can uh, save settings in two and three so this comes in handy uh, basically when you have multiple users or multiple samples that you're working with uh, you can preset the settings uh, using the lock function here and then uh, even you turn it off and turn it on again you have the settings done so then you have the flipping option here you can flip your images sideways you can flip it upside down so vertically and horizontal flipping this is your white balance button this is your auto button this comes in handy uh, when you're just new to fluorescence is starting out you hit auto this automatically goes back to default setting which is optimally set for the camera and for most samples uh, under RGB 
So this could be a good starting point and then you can uh, fine adjust the image further. So that's how easy this software is. This is uh, extremely user friendly and the output is in front of you. You can uh, see how brilliant the image is. You can see the detailing inside the nuclei as well. I did not have to turn on a mercury vapor lamp. I did not have to wait 20 minutes for it to warm up. I did not have to take uh, black and white images in single channels and then pseudo color and layer them. Uh, it's just instant on and instant off. And what you see is what you get. Just to give you an idea of you know how traditional way uh, was followed to take images, I'll try to recreate it uh, using the color to grayscale button here. So if I slide it all the way down to grayscale, this is how traditionally how a grayscale image would look like. So you can see you have lost all detailing. There is no depth perception in the image. Uh, you don't know whether the nuclei is in the background or foreground. All that detailing is completely lost. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is uh, not a great image, so to speak. But uh, you can have a real nice color live image. Why would you want to take a grayscale image? You can just hit the button and uh, click button and that's it. There you go. You have a live color image. So you can keep scrolling and scanning and uh, get to different areas of interest, take pictures all the way and then, uh, you know, uh, do your research. For more information, don't forget to log on to www.laxcoin.com and keep visiting our YouTube channel for more such exciting videos. Thank you.